The Fermi paradox is always a favorite in the space community because of our utter lack of a good solution to it, or perhaps our ignorance and overabundance of good solutions. In this video, I want to cover an idea that was recently brilliantly exhibited in Liu Chichin, excuse my Chinese, his book The Dark Forest in the Three Body Problem Trilogy. Seems to me like he either coined this term or at least hugely popularized it. But either way, if you happen to also be a game theory nut, this Fermi Paradox solution might really intrigue you. So what is it? This is the way Liu explains it. I think it's an absolutely great explanation of what the Dark Force theory is and kind of how it got its name. Here's the quote. The universe is a dark forest. Every civilization is an armed hunter stalking through the trees like a ghost, gently pushing aside branches that block the path and trying to tread without sound. Even breathing is done with care. The hunter has to be careful because everywhere in the forest are stealthy hunters like him. If he finds another life, another hunter, angel, or a demon, a delicate infant to tottering old man, a fairy or demigod, there's only one thing he can do. Open fire and eliminate them. Strong words, right? Now why is that the only option? Probably the best way to start that explanation would be to state the Dark Force Theory's two basic axioms. The first axiom is that survival is the primary need of civilization. Therefore, civilizations will do whatever it takes to ensure their own survival. The second axiom is that civilizations always grow and expand, but the amount of matter and resources in the universe is finite. So this brings up many questions. For example, what if the civilization is not malevolent? But how would you know that? How would we know that? You almost have to assume that they are. Or what does the risk-reward ratio between malevolent and benevolent societies have to be before the correct move is to not eliminate them? Or to eliminate them? Perhaps the civilizations that survive be the best are the ones that protect their risk of extinction the best. One could argue we are doing the exact opposite. Say we're in the dark forest. There are a hundred other civilizations. Not only are we not tiptoeing, but we've lit a bonfire and shot flares into the air. We're trying to be found. We're shooting Voyager spacecraft. We're sending out radio signals. We're doing what we can to be found, right? If there are a hundred other civilizations in that forest with us, what number have to be malevolent before we put out the bonfire? Right? Before we stop sending spacecraft. What number before we open fire and try to eliminate them to reduce our risk? If survival is the primary goal, which I find that hard to argue against, then I also find it hard to believe that what we're doing is the correct behavior. There's no way that risk reward makes any sense. If we are in so-called missile range of any malevolent societies, then what we're doing makes no sense at all. In fact, we could be putting ourselves in civilizational danger. And all this is without discussing morality. It's one thing to go dark and not expose ourselves, but what if we discover another society? It's quite another thing to exterminate a civilization than it is to hide from civilizations. But what's the benefit to leaving them? What if they destroy us? Say they're behind us in technology, so we decide to give them a pass, but then they pass us and turn malevolent. From a game theory perspective, to me, cooperation and benevolence seem like a risky, or if not outright insane strategy, if you buy into this theory. Uh, the one other thing I wanted to talk about was... Uh, an interesting wrinkle in this theory that many people haven't talked about is a hive society. Say like a wasp or an ant on earth or even the Borg, <laughs> right? One can even imagine a society like this being very cooperative between themselves but extremely indifferent and even hostile to other civilizations. So perhaps they would buy into the Dark Forest theory and just eliminate anything without asking questions. I don't find this too hard to believe. Um, 
Obviously, we've all heard probably some celebrities like Stephen Hawking have expressed concerns about dangerous encounters with aliens. He compared it to Native Americans meeting Columbus. I don't fully buy into this because in that situation, I think the biggest problem was more likely the germs, but it also highlighted what could happen if meeting an aggressive or ideologically zealous society could do to another civilization if they believe they are righteously uh, required or can do what, whatever they want, basically, right? I'll come to this again in a minute. Um, but to bring it back to the Fermi Paradox, again, the classic Fermi Paradox question, right? Where is everyone? Where the heck is everybody? If you buy into this theory, maybe all the smart civilizations are hiding, and we're the only ones dumb enough to be willingly exposing ourselves. After all, we've got to at least entertain the idea that maybe we shouldn't be shooting flares in every direction. Maybe we shouldn't be trying to be found. What if the first civilization to see us zaps us? And again, we've been broadcasting for quite a while, at least to quite a few systems close to us, have, would clearly have been able to find us if they were looking. So again, where is everyone? Um, in the Dark Forest book, it hypothesized that only threatening societies would be considered hostile or worth destroying, because obviously it would take some energy to shoot an interplanetary missile or whatever it would take to destroy a whole planet or civilization. So in the book, they used it as uh, light speed travel. If a society could travel at or near the speed of light then they were considered potentially hostile and were worth eliminating. Because obviously we aren't going to be sneaking up on anybody with the way we can travel currently. So perhaps that could be a reason why we haven't encountered anyone or any, any civilizations. But again, we won't know. So what are some problems with the Dark Forest Theory? first problem that I don't necessarily 100% agree with, but many people do, is that it would be near impossible for any civilization to get to intergalactic capabilities without some kind of level of benevolence and cooperation. So in order to become a spacefaring civilization, you need to have some level of cooperation in your species and peacefulness to, to get to that level, otherwise you would have destroyed yourself or been destroyed. My problem with this theory is that it ignores hive-type societies. I think those could still be extremely plausible in this scenario, um, because they could be very cooperative but still very hostile towards other civilizations. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Let me know in the comments. Makes me think a bit of the Borg, <laughs> again. <laughs> um, the scale of the universe is the second problem. This is my biggest problem. If there are other civilizations, where are they, right? Classic Fermi Paradox. Will expansion and real estate ever really be a problem? I might find this hard to believe. I mean, like I said, to me this is my biggest problem with this Star Forest theory. It assumes that real estate would be a problem, at least on enough of a level to justify destroying another civilization. Would it be? I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know. To me, this is, a, this is a bit of a known unknown, as Donald Rumsfeld once said in one of my favorite quotes. There are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know. Uh, all politics aside, obviously, I'm not a fan, but it was a great quote. There are always unknowns and unknowns. Also, we have to keep in mind. So, perhaps we don't know what we don't know. And there could be other problems with this. But until that time... Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. 
And to help me turn my dream into reality and make more videos, check out my Patreon below and consider a donation. Thanks again. Till next time. See ya.